I've been playing my Ultimate Iron Man account for some time now. And although I don't usually show it, I've actually been recording the whole journey since the start. I typically upload short videos with a lot of editing, but this time it's different. This is the start of a new miniseries you can all watch as we learn what it takes to prepare and complete the Inferno as an Ultimate Iron Man. I've always imagined what it'd be like to get Inferno Cake. But usually those daydreams didn't really include my UIM account. If we take a look at the UIM high scores for the Inferno, you can see that there's really not that many. In fact, if I just got 2KC, I'd be top 100 probably for quite a while. My current goal is just to get 1KC. So what is it going to take to achieve that? Before starting off this journey, I want to give you guys a showcase of what I currently have. Gear-wise, I have full Bandos, a Fang with an Avernic, that's usually the stuff that I use, as well as for range, I use full Crystal with the Bofa. We can talk about magic later. I'm currently a little over 2100 total, but when it comes to combat related stats, I have 96 attack, strength, and defense with 99 HP, 99 range, 93 mage, and 88 prayer. Attack and strength don't matter much in this case, so let's take them out. My stats are decent, especially my range and HP. If I want any decent shot at the Inferno, I need to get 99 magic. When it comes to defense and prayer, I'll be more lenient on those. I'm just going to try to get those as high as possible by the time I start the attempts. In the aspect of range, I still have more to do. I have to get Rigor, and on top of that, even Augury from the Chamber of Xerix. Throughout the Inferno, I'll be mostly relying on my Bofa. When it comes to the magic weapon I'll be using, I actually don't have one. We can take a look into my easiest option, but uh, give me one second, I'll be right back. Since I've recently completed the Secrets of the North quest, I now have access to a pretty easily obtainable magic weapon that happens to be pretty viable. Muspa drops the Ancient Icon, of which you then attach to the Ancient Staff. Good news for me, I already do have that staff. I keep the staff on me at all times for whenever I want a Burst Slayer task, as well as there's a Master Clue Scroll step that requires negative one prayer. Not only is the Scepter better than the Staff in terms of stats, the Scepter provides buffs to ancient magic spells. For instance, I'd be healed more during blood barraging, and I'd even be able to freeze the Nibblers for a tad bit longer. So we're definitely going to go ahead and put this one in the looting bag. As you can see, there was an issue! Alarm off! Ah shit, fuck, fuck! Off! Off! Please turn off! This was a great example of what to avoid for long-term gameplay. As soon as you attach that ancient icon to that staff, it does become untradeable. Untradeable items are not able to go into the looting bag, which means my only option after I'm done, if I was to complete it, is to drop it. So what magic weapon will I be getting? Well, the Master Wand. When compared to the Ancient Scepter, the wand does fall short just a tiny bit. However, it is tradable, and has the possibility of being upgraded into the code I want, assuming I get lucky at Chambers of Xerix. If I'm going to be doing that raid anyway, I might as well take the gamble and hopefully get the drop. Now let's discuss the armor. Bandos, not an issue. Full Crystal, not an issue. Here we go. My current go-to magic armor for pretty much any scenario is always Mystic. This is because I pretty much ignored magic upgrades this whole entire time, due to hating Chambers of Xerix and not doing any barrows whatsoever. Unfortunately for me, these are pretty much the only ways of getting any decent magic upgrade. Ooh, the cookies are ready. Woo-wee! Mmm, those smell delicious. You are the... Oh, hello again. Music off! I may not be the smartest guy in the room, but I definitely know Mystic is not going to help me with this journey. Now, when it comes to magic gear in the Inferno, I really only need one good magic piece. To be honest, I'll take anything from Chambers. If I end up not getting any ancestral piece from Chambers, I'll grind out barrels until I get either a top or bottom of Arams. This is something I'm kind of hoping that I can avoid. On the topic of magic, something else that I will need to be getting that won't be a passive grind. It's going to be Slayer. I'm currently 89 Slayer and I need 93 so I can eventually have access to the Occult Necklace through the Smoke Devils. During this Slayer grind is where I will be bursting as many tasks as possible and hopefully getting 99 Mage along the way. There's actually one more thing I haven't mentioned, and this is the first thing that I'm actually grinding out. The Pharaoh's Scepter. This brings me to where I currently am now. I'm currently grinding out Pyramid of Plunder. This may seem like it has completely nothing to do with this whole Inferno grind, but it actually does. 
Switching between any mage book can be pretty time consuming. For example, if I'm doing Slayer, I miss out on a lot of prayer XP. That's because if I want to sacrifice the insult heads, I need to make my way to the Arcus spellbook, then go back to the normal spellbook, and then immediately back to the ancient spellbook. Due to these reasons, I often leave the insult heads on the floor and continue as if nothing happened. Getting an altar in my house that lets me swap spellbooks would be amazing. However, I also have 92 construction, so I'm able to get the occult altar. I have everything that I need to create the occult altar except for one item. That's the Pharaoh's Scepter. Pyramid of Plunder really isn't that bad of a minigame, especially when it comes to getting the thieving experience. The content to show really isn't that much, so I will show you guys what it was like me doing Chambers of Xerix a little bit earlier. I wanted to get my toes wet in the Chambers of Xerix since I have Ooh, very low KC. I'm not good <laughs> at this rate at all. I did not know that I was going to get back-to-back -back disappointment with my friends getting exactly what I needed. The first raid, my friend got the Dexterous <laughs> Prayer Scroll, with immediately right after my other friend getting the Arcane Prayer Scroll. I... you can't make this up. After those raids, I pretty much went directly back to thieving. Even though some may say my luck wasn't very good, it actually did start to turn around. Let's go! I got it! Wait, I gotta drop stuff. Uh, whew. I had... Let's go. I got the scepter. Woo! As soon as I could, I started buying all the pieces that I would need, but I did need to be careful about it because I was trying to avoid death banking with the amount of space that I had. All right, there we go. This should be good now. I need to get a hammer and a saw. Got that right over here. <clears throat> oh, hammer. Let's get building, baby. Oh, I gotta go to building mode. <laughs> All right, I am so stoked. This is beyond awesome. Yes, give it to me. Oh, like, come on, look at that. That is awesome. Okay, so the bloods, I need 5k bloods and souls, 10k astral runes, that's, uh, I have 5k bloods, I can get that, and, uh, RQ signet and lunar signet, let's, uh, get those. Okay, here we go, let me talk to this guy, he sells souvenirs, okay, that was free. Didn't have to buy that, and then now we go to Lunar Isle. Okay, this one I get from Baba. Here we go. We'll get one of these. I'm gonna have to do some world hopping. I'll start down here. I went and got more money, so now I can buy soul runes as well. Speed this up. Why not? Since it took me quite a while to get uh, 5k astral runes. Oh, look at those freaking noobs coming here. Trying to take my stuff? I don't think so, buddy. So I have this. Now I just got to go and get some blood runes. This is where I leave pretty much all of my blood runes mostly. I think I even have some in my looting bag. But that's just because I gathered that from my last outing while doing Slayer. I am going to empty these. And do some calculations so that I have 5k left. I'm actually just gonna guess. Alright, that is the best that I can do. Go ahead and put these away. Okay, and the moment we have all been waiting for. Let's upgrade this bad boy. Hell yeah! Oh, that is so sexy! Oh my gosh! I can... I can go to anything. Oh, things that I've never even seen before. I'm so excited to do some chamber. <clears throat> so I spent a good 30 minutes doing Slayer on Abbey Demons, and it took me that long to find out that I'm actually supposed to be doing Baron Spectres. I uh, completely misread. So, <laughs> like, just look how, look how easy this is. I'm saving myself like 20 minutes. 
Maybe realistically like 10, but still, this is just top tier moves. I just come over here. Just look at that. That is perfect. And just like that, I make my way back to my house. Go. So this took, I don't know. I just logged in. I wasn't even in my house when I logged in. I'm going to go to Ancient. And there you go. Back at it, ready to do another grind. That is just really amazing. I I'm loving this. The amount of money that I have on my account is probably, like, GP-wise, around 30-something mil. I'm guessing. I, I really don't know. I have money in stash places that I haven't really checked in a long time. Like, this place over here. Ever since the LMS came out, I have not really looked into this offer. And I'm over here about to be buying some Chaos Runes, so let's check out how much I have. Yep, there you go. About 14 mil. Let's take out one mil and just buy some more Chaos Runes and Death Runes. I'm not necessarily doing, like, Blood Barrage for a bit. I was, and I wasted, like, 10k Blood Runes that I had. Um, I'm doing Ice Burst. It is less, but, like, the resources, rune-wise, are a lot cheaper. And I'm kind of taking that trade. Currently doing a Hard Clue Scroll, and I got Arnold Lidspore. Instantaneously, as soon as I saw his name, I knew exactly who he was. I am actually very friendly with this guy. Look at this guy. This is a Giga Chad right here. He is a bank and also a store. Look at that. Onto the woods. Woo! Okay. Complete and total poop. Okay, I am coming up. Oh, I have to get this back filled up again. I am coming up on, there you go, 90 Slayer. I think this might be the highest Slayer I've ever had in my whole entire career of playing RuneScape. Outside of this count, I am a big noob. I just got the shield left half. <laughs> uh, I don't even have the Ring of Wealth. I wonder what the odds of that are. White chest! I got another torn prayer scroll. I got, I think, a PB on points. 18274. Whew. I didn't die. 24k points. I had no food left. I had two prayer sips, one overload. Yay! A quick side note on the Lizardman Fangs. This is actually a drop I'm looking to be getting. I need 5,000 total so that I can build a teleport in my house. I'm currently taking a very long cringe trek from the fairy ring to get over here, and it just wastes way too much time. I'll take the bloods. Um, okay. Well, I've, uh... Pretty much doubled the amount of KC that I had since the beginning of this video, so I'm going to take a break from Chambers for a bit. 94 magic, I can now do Ice Barrage. <laughs> uh, I got Dual Psy. What is that? <laughs> is it cosmetic? Or can he... <laughs> Okay, and I get another second, <laughs> another shield half. This is actually a pretty horrible drop. What the hell's going? <laughs> yeah. Let's go! Amulet of Glory, uh, T4, whatever the heck that is. Let's go! 91 Slayer, and I'm currently doing Hellhounds right now. Um, that is my task. So, if you could put the puzzle pieces together, I'm about to be doing Cerberus for my very first time. 
Uh, also, on top of that, I'm actually probably going to be putting a quick pause on this. Meatberry, my very good friend, has been wanting to help me out with my Chambers of Zeric grind. Completely free of cost, he wanted to scale a raid for me. To be honest, I had no idea what that even meant. So let's take a further look. The raid's difficulty is based off of the amount of players in the party. The more people in the party, the more difficulty and HP the monster is going to have. However, you typically wouldn't notice the difference in difficulty since you're doing a scaled raid that is proportionate to the team size that you have. One of the mechanics of the raid is that if someone leaves the party, the raid still continues on at the exact scale it was at when the person was in it. Mega scaling a raid means taking advantage of this fact. Since obtaining points is based on the player's activity within the raid, the more people that leave a raid that's already started means that there's more points to be obtained by those still in it. Every 8,676 points a player gets within a raid equates to a 1% chance of rolling the rare table. A player's maximum point count is 131,000. Any outstanding points after that goes directly into the team's point bank. Now we're going to be doing a 1 plus 22 mega scale raid. The most important part of all this is that I'm the only one remaining in the raid before the final blow to Ulm takes place. Barry and any other friends will need to have left before this point. Since Barry will be doing all of the work, all the points that he got past his cap will remain in the team point bank. And since I'm the only one left in the raid at that point, I will get 100% of those points since there's no one to split them with as well as my points. Assuming everything goes well with Barry capping his points and me capping mine, I'd be looking at a maximum 50% chance of rolling the purple table, due to the 1 plus 22 scaled points available. These types of raids are very expensive and normally take between 3 to 5 hours. And this is how my experience went. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> this is pretty good, uh, Herblor XP. About to get 93. Woo! 93 Herblor. I'm getting a little nervous. This is, uh, this is the room before Ulm, so good luck to everybody, especially me. <laughs> Time. I think I got it from here. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
Oh my god! <laughs>